My name is Dwayne Thomas. I'm 32 years old. I'm from Zanesville, Ohio. I was born September 11th, 1987. Um, I was born to a mentally ill mother. I was taken away from her at the age of four years old. Um, I have one brother and one sister. Originally, me and my brother went to my mom's sister and her husband, and my sister went to my grandma and grandpa. Um, I remember like some of my early memories. Um, you know, my aunt and uncle wanted me to call them mom and dad. You know, and they eventually raised my brother. You know, to call them mom and dad, and I didn't want to do that. Um, you know, so I ended up living with my sister at my grandma and grandpa's. And, um, you know, I, I was a troubled kid, you know, because I knew something was wrong. Like, I, you know, I was young, living with my grandparents, you know. I wasn't allowed to tell my brother that he was my brother. And, you know, um, eventually, you know, I did tell him. And also with me acting out and all that, like, I found myself in a foster home. Um... You know, like, my childhood was just, it wasn't normal. Um, my father, I had weekend visits with him, and he did come around, and he eventually did get custody of me when I was about 12 years old. Um, you know, um, when I was 10 years old, that's when I went to the foster home. Um, like I said, I, I was a troubled kid, you know, because of that situation, and... I tried to kill myself multiple times, um, all the way throughout my childhood, all the way up until my adult life, you know, like I tried to kill myself at least once or twice every year. Um, I guess, um, I don't know. I really don't have the proper relationship with anybody on my mom's side of the family. You know, I wish things could change, you know, and I, I've tried and... I think they've tried to, as we just don't really know each other, you know, and I, I don't know. Um, pretty much my, I tried smoking weed when I was, you know, 12 or 13 and experimented with drinking, you know, but I really didn't start drinking and doing any kind of drug, you know, until I was 18 years old. And it started off at 18 with smoking weed and drinking, um, you know, and it just slowly progressed or like as the years went on, um, I don't know. I just, things just really got worse. Um, I started smoking weed and drinking and all that stuff pretty heavily when I was 18 years old. I had my own apartment. Um, eventually I messed that up due to my partying. Um, I, I used to sell weed and, you know, that's how I supplied my smoking habit. And, you know, eventually that wasn't enough because I wanted money to, you know. So I started selling crack and, like, I, I sold weed and crack and stuff like that, you know, all the way into my mid-20s. And I, I also, like, smoked weed and drank alcohol the whole time. Um, and eventually... You know, I started smoking the crack. You know, I wanted to try it. I started putting it in, sprinkling it in joints and blunts. And, you know, and then I started smoking it straight. And uh, I really, I just spiraled, spiraled out of control. I've tried every drug that there is. Um, I don't know. It started really getting bad, you know. Like, my drinking... Like, when nobody wanted to be around me when I was drinking, I completely ruined every relationship that I ever had because of my drug and alcohol use. Um, you know, and I started doing crystal meth, you know, probably when I was about 27, 28 years old. Um, and, you know, like I experimented with that. Um, I really, I just would do anything that there was to do and I, I didn't think there was anything wrong with it until you know late into my career of drugs and alcohol when I was like you know deep into the game and I, I wanted to stop using for a long time and I just couldn't 
find a way out. And I didn't know how to get out. You know, it took for me to kick in my aunt's door on my dad's sister. Um, nobody was there, but like I was just, I was hallucinating and I was in a bad situation, you know. Um, There's a lot of drug action going on um, from other people that that lived in the house and pretty much the cops just took me out of the situation and took me to the hospital and from the hospital I knew what to do. I told them I wanted to kill myself because really I did and um, you know, I had played, I've been there and done that. Usually I would go to the hospital and say I wanted to kill myself and, you know, really meant it. And then they would just eventually release me and then I'd go back to drinking and smoking and doing drugs. And, um, but this last time, you know, it, there was, I really wanted out and they gave me some numbers to some rehabs and I actually called them and um, a place called Woodhaven here in Dayton, Ohio, they um, they was the easiest ones to get hold of. A lot of places wanted me to leave messages, and they answered the phone, and, you know, they, they said that they would come pick me up, you know, two hours away, all the way from coming to Zanesville, Ohio, to pick me up, all the way from Dayton, you know, and that's when I discovered that there was hope. Um, you know, um, I learned everything that I, you know, know now, you know, from starting at Woodhaven. Um, I left Woodhaven, w w I've been to Woodhaven twice. Um, the first time, you know, I left with a sponsor, um, and I wanted to do the recovery thing exactly how they was teaching us to do it, so... I just, you know, I just rolled with it. Um, I, I went to my first sober living, um, and I was doing really good. I was going to meetings. I made it all the way to my fourth step, um, and the sober living I was at, they would pick us up in the mornings, and they would take us to group, which was a completely different building from the house we were staying in. And basically, eventually, um, my server living house, um, somebody come in and robbed it. And it was one of the guys who was living there who got kicked out. Um, and he, he took a bunch of my stuff and a bunch of another guy's stuff. He pawned my laptop and some of my Xbox One games. And um, I, we made a report and all that stuff. Um, I, I felt unsafe at the sober living house, you know, and I did go back to that pawn shop because they did call me and tell me who took the stuff and where it was. So I went to the pawn shop and I bought my stuff back and I decided, you know, I'm leaving the sober living and I'm going back to where I'm from. And when I went back to where I'm from, I wasn't ready to go back to where I'm from. I went around the same people, you know, and I... I just, I relapsed. That was my first relapse and my only relapse so far. You know, I, I hope that's the case in my story. You know, I don't ever want to go back to that lifestyle again. Um, pretty much though, um, I was in like, I, I was back home to my hometown for two months and I decided, you know, I, I need to go back to Dayton and I, I need to finish getting my life together. So I called Woodhaven and they come back to pick me up, you know, and I was embarrassed. Um, you know, I thought people would look down on me, you know, because I messed up. And But really it was, it was a warm welcome, you know. Um, and this time around, like I graduated treatment again for the second time. Like I already knew both times like that I was gonna graduate treatment. This time, um, I ended up coming to Good Shepherd Ministries, and since being here, I am really close to having my high school diploma. I will have a certification in basic plumbing. My life's just getting better all in all, you know. I really don't like talking about 
my childhood and I really don't like you know going back and talking about my life and all the drugs and alcohol really like I really just like how it is you know in recovery and you know the sky the sky's the limit because you know being in recovery you know my life has just gotten better and better and I've learned to you know keep good people around me and I've learned to you know I I don't know. I just feel happier, for real. Um.